California and Texas are the two states that could not be any more different than one another politically and economically. However, for nurses, they are the two states that always come up in discussion when nurses are looking to move to a state that provides them with the highest earning potential and the best quality of life. I have to admit, Monica and I were in the same predicament before we moved to California. So I decided to collect salary data from the highest paying cities in both of these states from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. After gathering this data, I took their median salaries and put them into an after-tax calculator. I also went to Zillow and found the median home price in each of these high paying cities. Finally, after getting the median home prices, I placed them into a mortgage calculator to find out what the monthly mortgage payments would be based on the most recent average interest rates. So in this video, I'm going to reveal and rank the highest paying cities in California and in Texas so that by the end of this video, you'll have a better idea of which state you should move to if you are looking to increase your income after taking two of your highest expenses, your taxes and your mortgage into account. If you don't know me by now, my name is Jason. My wife's name is Monica. We're both nurses in Sacramento, California. We moved here from New York City five years ago in 2017 with the goal of retiring early. Our plan is to retire in the next eight years and we make videos to show you exactly how to do that. So if you find this video interesting, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel because we have many other videos on our channel that are similar to this one. All right, so before we get to comparing the salaries of the cities in California and Texas, I want to talk a little bit about the overtime laws in both of these states. The one thing you should know about California is that it is a state that is very friendly to unions and very beneficial to employees. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you're an employee of California and you've worked more than eight hours in one day, you will be earning time and a half after those eight hours. If you've worked more than 40 non-overtime hours in a work week, you will also then be earning time and a half after those 40 hours. If you work any amount of hours for seven consecutive days, on the seventh consecutive day, you will be earning time and a half. And if you've worked more than 12 hours on one workday, you will be earning double time after the 12th hour of work. And lastly, if you've worked more than eight hours on the seventh consecutive day, in one work week, you will also be earning double time after those eight hours of work. Now, let's contrast that to the state of Texas. In the state of Texas, if you've worked more than eight hours in one day, you will not earn any overtime unless you've gone over 40 hours in that work week. If you've worked more than 40 non-overtime hours in a work week, you will be earning time and a half after those 40 hours in the state of Texas. So what happens if you work seven consecutive days in a row? Well, in the state of Texas, you do not earn any overtime unless those hours are over 40 hours in one work week. And like California, what happens if you work more than 12 hours in a workday in the state of Texas? Well, in the state of Texas, again, you are not earning any overtime unless you've gone over 40 hours for that work week. And lastly, what happens if you've worked more than eight hours on the seventh consecutive day in a work week? Again, you are not going to earn any overtime unless you've gone over 40 hours in that work week. And there is no such thing as double time in the state of Texas. Now let's talk about parental leave because California ranks number one in the entire country when it comes to providing parental leave to both mothers and fathers. However, on the opposite end of the spectrum, Texas ranks as one of the worst states when it comes to providing parental leave. If you're a private sector employee in the state of California, California's law provides working parents up to six weeks, which has recently been updated to up to eight weeks of paid leave to care for a newborn, newly adopted child, or foster care placed child. This law also affords leave to care for a seriously ill family member, including a spouse or partner who is temporarily disabled due to pregnancy or who is recovering from childbirth. California's state disability insurance program also provides partial wage replacement and is funded through employee payroll deductions and covers California employees, including temporary and part-time employees. The typical disability period for pregnant workers is up to four weeks before and six, now eight, weeks after the birth of the child and up to four months of unpaid job protected leave for pregnancy related disability, regardless of the amount 
amount of time the woman has worked for the employer. Once an employee's pregnancy disability is over, she may request up to 12 additional weeks of leave to care for or bond with her baby immediately following the pregnancy disability leave. And if you're a state employee, you have even better benefits. State employees are eligible for up to 26 weeks of benefits, and they may be entitled up to one year of unpaid maternity leave, paternity leave, or adoption leave. Now, let's contrast that to Texas's parental leave. If you're a private sector employee in the state of Texas, Texas has no laws guaranteeing job protection or benefits for new parents. Texas state employees are entitled up to 12 weeks of parental leave for the birth of a child or for the adoption or foster care placement of a child younger than three. All right, now that we've got the employee benefits out of the way, let's talk about the pay. If we are simply and only discussing the median salaries, then Santa Cruz, California is going to be the highest paying city of both of these states and possibly the entire country. In Santa Cruz, California, you can expect to earn $164,710. If you look at the top 10 highest paying cities, you will see that California lands in every single one of these top 10. At the highest end, we have Santa Cruz, California. Then we have Watsonville, San Jose, Sunnyvale, Santa Clara, San Francisco, Oakland, Hayward, Vallejo, and Fairfield, California. And all the way at the bottom of this list, you will notice that most of the cities are in the state of Texas. With the lowest earning city in Abilene, Texas, where nurses earn a median salary of $60,910 per year. But what happens when we start factoring in the taxes? As you can see here, if you're living in Santa Cruz, then 35% of your income is going to be going towards your taxes. As a single income earner with no kids, you will be getting taxed $57,731. Monica and I currently live in Sacramento, California, where the median annual salary is $131,700. $160. The average tax rate for a single income earner in this city is 33%. That means you would be getting taxed $43,569 of those $131,760 you earned. If you're interested in this chart, I'll have it available on our website for anybody who wants to purchase it, or you can join our Discord group in the description below and get it for free. So like I mentioned before, let's look at the highest paying cities when we take the taxes and the mortgage payments into account. If you are a nurse working and living in Corcoran, California, you will be earning a median salary of $125,180. The median home price in Corcoran, California as of July 2022 is $240,824. The amount of income you will have left after you pay your taxes and your mortgage payments is going to be $67,000. $445 as a single income earner. That means you will be bringing home $5,620 per month as a nurse working in the city of Corcoran, California. And as you can see here in this list, of the top 10 cities in California and Texas, Texas only has one city on this list that will provide you with the highest net income after your taxes and your mortgage is paid. And that is the city of Port Arthur, Texas, where your median salary is going to be $75,040. You'll be paying $15,017 in taxes, which is 20% of your median salary. And the median home price is $87,237. The total percentage of your income going towards your taxes and your mortgage payments is going to be 29% and you will be left with $4,416 per month after your taxes and your mortgage payments are made. So as you can see here, Monica and I currently live in Sacramento, California. And because we both file our taxes as a married couple, we are each bringing in more than $52,499 per year after our taxes and our mortgage payments are made. In fact, we have a video where I break down exactly how much we bring in on a monthly basis after you deduct all of our expenses. And it comes to over $19,000 per month. So if you're interested in that video, make sure you check it out right over here. After watching this video, I hope I've given you a foundation for which city you should move to if you're deciding between California and Texas. However, if you've made up your mind and you want to move to California, you can watch this video here that will go over the highest paying hospitals in all of California.